morning, Scouts. Today we have a really awesome activity or game to play. What we're going to do is recognise different types of environmental hazards and natural disasters. I'll flip through the next slides and we'll play a guessing game of what natural disasters the pictures are. Oh, wow. Look at this really cool photo. The sky has gone purple. What do you think this environmental hazard could be? Have you seen it before? Have you seen it at daytime, nighttime? What was the weather like? I'll give you a couple more seconds, but I reckon you'll have this one down pat. Wow, it was a lightning strike. Lightning strikes can happen during thunderstorms. They can happen during snowstorms, even with volcanic eruptions. They can happen lots of times. The only time I've seen one is in a thunderstorm though. Did you get lightning strike correct? I think another really good correct guess for this one would be something like a thunderstorm because thunder comes from lightning. So you can't have a thunderstorm without lightning. A lightning strike is an electrical discharge between the atmosphere, which is the sky, and the ground. This is a different natural disaster. However, it can be caused by lightning strikes. They are very common in Australia, particularly in our hot, dry summer months. Two really common other ways of this natural disaster starting are by cigarette butts being left on the floor and unattended campfires. Have you figured out what natural disaster it is? It's a bushfire. A bushfire is a fire that burns through areas of bushland. It is a type of wildfire. That means it's a fire that burns through wild vegetation. These fires are unpredictable and difficult to control. Wow, look at this picture. This picture shows the aftermath of a certain natural disaster. Do you know what it is? This natural disaster is one that shakes the ground. It happens when tectonic plates, which are the outer layer of Earth, collide, ride over one another or shear past each other. Have you figured out what natural disaster it is? It's an earthquake. We just had an earthquake in Melbourne the other day. At the moment, we're in October in 2021 and we felt one down here in Victoria. Wow. An earthquake is an intense shaking of Earth's surface. The shaking is caused by the movements in the Earth's outermost layer. Oh, wow. What's this next one? This next one is a picture of the aftermath of a certain natural disaster. It is quite hard to tell from this picture what the natural disaster is. Here's another one. This natural disaster is in the form of a massive wave. Do you know what it's called? Good job. It's a tsunami. A tsunami is an extremely large wave caused by a large and sudden displacement or movement in the ocean. It can be because of earthquakes, like on the slide before, when those tectonic plates whack into each other. It can also be caused by landslides, volcanic activity and certain types of weather. Oh, cool. This picture is from above, so we would not see this natural disaster looking like this. 
we would actually experience very strong winds and possibly heavy rain and storm. Do you know what this natural disaster is called? This natural disaster is called a cyclone. It happens when warm, moist air over the ocean rises up. This pulls cold air with higher pressure to replace it. But then this air becomes warm and rises. This starts a cycle and continues to repeat and build, gaining speed as it goes. Have you seen a natural disaster like this before? This is a very interesting natural disaster because they can last a long time. Most of the other disasters we looked at happen and then they stop. When I was a child, we had this natural disaster happen here in Australia for eight years. So this type of natural disaster can happen for a long time. Do you know what natural disaster this is? This is a picture of the ground during a drought. A drought is an event of prolonged shortages of water. So it's when we experience below the normal precipitation or rainfall. This is another natural disaster particularly common in Australia. They mainly happen in Queensland, New South Wales, Victoria and Western Australia. Can you see the water on the floor? Well, there's no floor anymore. Do you know what this is called? It's a flood. This is the opposite to the drought that we just had. Flooding occurs commonly when there's heavy rainfall and the natural water courses, so like the rivers, do not have the capacity to carry this excess water away. This is a picture of a thermometer. Can you read what temperature is on the thermometer? It is in degrees Celsius. I can read it's about 40. What did you get? What type of natural disaster happens when it is very, very hot? Have you come up with one yet? It's a heat wave. A heat wave is three or more consecutive days, so that means in a row, of unusually high maximum and minimum temperatures. This might be one of the coolest and well-known natural disasters. Well, when watching from a TV at least. Do you know what it is? It is caused when enough magma builds up in the magma chamber and forces its way up to the surface and erupts. Have you got an answer? It's a volcano or volcanic eruption. A volcanic eruption is when lava and gas are released from a volcano, sometimes explosively. Do you know what this is? This is not clouds in the sky. This is actually made of dust. Have you thought of a name for what this natural disaster might be? It's a dust storm. A dust storm happens when strong winds pick up dust and dirt from the ground. It raises it into the air and atmosphere. This is a different type of storm. The picture is of the floor. The little white dots are pieces of ice. Do you know what type of storm this could be? It's a hailstorm. Hailstones, or those white pieces of ice, are formed when raindrops are carried upwards by a thunderstorm by up drafts. 
They take into extremely cold areas of the atmosphere and those little raindrops freeze. When those drops get big enough, the hail forms because it is too heavy for those updraft winds to support. This is our third type of storm. It is quite similar to our first one, isn't it? But it's made of sand. What do you think this storm might be called? It's a sandstorm. Well done. Sandstorm occurs when unusually strong winds lift large amounts of sand from dry ground and it lifts it up into the sky or atmosphere. This is a funny picture. That person's going to struggle to get their car out. This is our fourth and final type of storm. What is that on the ground, do you think? Maybe some snow? Do you have a name for our last type of storm? That snow came from a snowstorm. A snowstorm is like a normal storm, but the precipitation or the thing that falls is snow instead of rain. Do you know what this type of natural disaster is? The area in the middle is not like it used to be. Before the picture was taken, there was trees there. Then the natural disaster happened and now there's not. It's almost like they all slid down the mountain. Do you know what type of natural disaster this is? It's a landslide. A landslide is a movement of rocks, debris or earth down a slope. It's normally caused after big rainfall because all the dirt is now mud and movable. They also can happen after droughts, earthquakes and volcanic eruptions. This is our 15th and final natural disaster. This is a picture of a beautiful snowy mountain. It's hard to see, but some parts of this picture, there's been a slide of snow, ice and debris down the mountain just like the landslide in the previous natural disaster. Do you know what it's called when snow falls down a hill? It's an avalanche. An avalanche is a mass of snow, ice and rocks that fall rapidly down a mountainside. Avalanches have four reasons as to why they occur. The first one is the steepness of a slope. So that's how hilly it is. The second one is snow cover. The third one is if there's a weak layer in that snow cover. And the fourth one is a trigger. So something like an earthquake or really high winds. That's the last one for today. And that was awesome work, guys. I would love to know how many you got right. Such a good learning activity. A really good activity to do after this is to talk to your leader about how to prepare and react to environmental hazards and natural disasters like the ones in this presentation. I hope you've had an awesome time doing this activity with us today. If you're looking for more environment-based activities, make sure you check out the rest of our YouTube channel. Bye!